Alright, so it seems like G-Wolves is one of the only companies outside of like Extra 5 seemingly willing to take a risk with the shapes of their mouths, like with their original HSK. Even though that's based off of the M1K and the M2K, but they've taken it a bit further each time. By adding side buttons this time around, they took the HSK from being a niche fingertip grip mouse to a niche fingertip grip mouse with a broader reach. Now, before we get into the new implementation of the side buttons, let's talk about the build quality of the HSK Plus and see what you're getting for $110 because that's not cheap. Overall, the mouse feels very solidly built from my first G Wolves mouse until now, I can see a huge improvement in the way that their mouse feel in the hand. Well, fingertips, I should say in this case, the mouse feet are Teflon and they feel like butter. The dimensions grew slightly near the front of the mouse and now has a slightly slender butt because who needs all that junk in the trunk when you're not even gonna be claw gripping this mouse? For me, I have medium hands and it's damn near impossible for me to like get a good claw grip without feeling like I got like tendonitis. Is that what it's called? Tendonitis when it's like that. I suspect some of this reduction was also done to take away some of the weight while allowing the HSK Plus to not only be fully enclosed and wireless, but also allow them to add side buttons to this mouse, something that we all wanted without adding a ton of weight to the mouse. Now, another way that they were able to keep the weight relatively low compared to the first one while making it wireless was to make the charging port USB micro. I've heard from other manufacturers that adding USB-C actually adds more weight to the mouse and and it seems like they're trying to do their best to keep the weight of the HSK Plus, which is 40 grams, as low as possible and make it comparable to the first one, which was about 37 grams. Not an excuse, but just a possible explanation why they're doing it. Honestly, I still think they should have put USB-C in here. I would have much rather had that than add a one gram or two in there, outside of maybe cost. Right, it's probably cheaper for them to make micro than to make USB-C. It would have been nice if they had USB-C here just for convenience. If I'm gonna talk about it with other companies, I gotta be fair and mention it here, especially when this mouse is coming in at $110. Now, while we're on the topic of charging, they give you 80 hours of battery life total, which is solid, especially for this size and weight. The buttons on the mouse are Omron switches. They aren't bad, not the crispiest clicks I've ever felt, but they are definitely solid and provide a nice cushioned out bottom. The scroll wheel placement to me is a little far back and sitting a little bit too low when I'm using my fingertip grip, but it's something you have to get used to if you're coming from one of the top five mice or one of the better mice out there. It's just different here, but I guess it just comes with the territory of using a mouse like this. Now let's talk about, in my opinion, the most important part of this drop, the side buttons. These single-handedly took this mouse from being that niche mouse to something with a broader reach. And I gotta say, they did a really good job with the placement of them. I never felt like I was fumbling to press them. They have good tactility, not final mouse good, but good enough. Let's drop a sound test so you can hear what this mouse sounds like. Now, as you can see, pretty good. I will say though, my scroll wheel is getting a little bit dirty on this white shell. I know they're coming out with some more colors. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to mention that. Now there are two types of fingertip grip users. One where you keep your fingertips straight on the mouse, like so. And then there's the one where you push, pull, and bend very dramatically with your fingertips. I feel like this mouse works better with the latter because that space that it gives you, it's almost impossible for me to hit the back of my palm with this mouse. Just gives you so much space to work with. I have to like overexert my fingers just to lightly touch my palm. That's the benefit of having your mouse cut in half here. In comparison, another fingertip grip mouse like the Zy Rail does work for me, but I do run into periods where I hit the back of my hand because of the length. Now length isn't all bad as it helps balance the mouse and gives you more of a stable shot in my opinion. I also love the grooves on the Zyrel more. I wish they could have implemented something here or like that, just to help with the pivoting of your fingers for even more fine tuned controlling. In comparison to the mouse it's based off of, the M2K, obviously this one has side buttons and weighs more. I like the M2K's grooves. It gives more of that Zyrel action. Oh boy, that sounds wrong. 
I'd like to see a variant of the HSK Plus with some grooves at some point, that would be nice. Overall though, I choose this one because I heavily rely on the side buttons for commands in game as well as push to talk for chatting or discord. It may seem like it's just two buttons, but it's really a game changer here. Side buttons now make this more consumer friendly to be used outside of gaming, whether that's browsing or moving around just generally on your desktop. I use my forward and back button all the freaking time and I sorely miss it when I use other mice that don't have it. Now in use, the lower front end and that slender body gives you more of a pencil action. Precision is at an all time high with this mouse. Tracking games really benefit from a mouse like this. With flick shot type games, you get that pinpoint precision, but it can be a little bit shaky at times because of the weight and size. And it doesn't give you that stability like a normal mouse would when it has that longer length. Another thing that I found is that this mouse works best with control pads because the buttery smooth feet combined with the size and the weight of this mouse makes for a very shaky experience sometimes on hybrid and fast pads, at least for me. I find pads like the Xi1 from ExtraFi, the GSR from Zowie, or the LG G Saturn really come in clutch with this mouse. Now I was making some pretty insane shots with this mouse. It's a little beast, but when I'm off or my shot isn't quite warmed up, it feels like I can't hit anything. I find at the end of the day though, I just prefer something a little more balanced and dare I say heavier so that I can feel and control the mouse. But this is definitely a fun mouse to try though at the end of the day. Now I do wanna mention there is some software that will allow you to control the pulling rate, the lift off distance. Uh, you can swap button commands and create macros. Now is the HSK Plus a good mouse? Yes, am I happy it exists? Yes, we need more of these types of risk taking mice because for some a mouse like this could be life changing, especially for a fingertip grip aimer. Will I personally be switching to this full time? No, but it will be a mouse that I come back to for fun. And at the end of the day, isn't that the goal of all this to have fun? It's food for thought. All right, thank you guys for watching. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.